Hello everyone, Southside Stacker here, and today I want to talk about how silver can be a collectible. Now, I think everyone in the stacking community agrees that silver can be one of three things. We all call it by different names, but it's pretty much silver can be a hedge, it can be an investment, and it can also be a collectible. Um, now, I wanted to, uh, the last video I talked about how silver is a hedge and an investment, uh, but this video, I want to talk about how it's a collectible. And I wanted to give this uh, one a separate video because um, I think there's a, a few rules that kind of go out the window and some things you should look out for when you're collecting silver. Uh, the first thing that kind of goes out the window is price is not really a factor. Well, it's not a huge factor when it comes to buying silver as collectibles. Um, also, it's a hobby. It's uh, something you enjoy doing. And I think the mentality behind collecting silver is I buy what I like and I like what I buy. Um, so with that, um, the reason why I wanted to uh, separate this topic is because I believe out of the three ways um, you can view silver, that as a collectible, um, those customers are preyed upon more often or more so than anyone who buys silver as an investment or as a hedge. And uh, that's what I wanted to get into. So I have four pieces in front of me. We have the Asahi bar. We have the JM bar, the Johnson Matthew bar. We have a uh, regular uh, Canadian silver maple leaf and a 30th anniversary silver leaf. And I wanted to talk about the price difference between them. So on the left, we have an Asahi round. I'm sorry, Asahi bar. This is about $15 and change. On the right, we have um, a JM bar. And this is about $17. Um, these two bars were made at the same place. All right, so same thing here. A regular a Royal Canadian Mint a silver maple leaf and another one uh, with a 30th anniversary. Same place, uh, but the one on the left is worth about $16, $17, and the one on the right, the 30th anniversary edition, is uh, $25. So this is, uh, I think these two are really good ways to show you collectible silver. One is just bullion silver, the other one is coins. And um, the reason why there's a price difference between Asahi and Johnson Matthey um, Asahi Refining actually actually purchased Johnson Matthews refiner, uh, refineries um, a while back. So the Johnson Matthews bars are no longer made, uh, which makes it uh, a vintage silver bar um, with limited kind of availability, I guess you could say. Um, so that increased the premiums on Johnson Matthews bars. So it becomes a collectible. Um, now we have the coins made from the Royal Canadian Mint. Um, not only is... Um, not only is there just more regular Canadian mints, uh, I'm sorry, Canadian silver maple leaves made than the 30th, um, it also adds a numismatic value to it because it's commemorating something, it's celebrating something. So a regular uh, silver maple leaf is made in the millions. Uh, the 30th anniversary edition uh, was made, I think there was only 250,000 of these made. Um, so not only is there a limited mintage on these, there's also the fact that um, it does celebrate something and that adds that numismatic value. And numismatic uh, applies to currency, uh, but more so often we're talking about coins when we say um, numismatic. Uh, numismatic is any currency that's uh, studied and collected and kind of has a cultural value. Um, so not only is it a collectible, it, all, it also has um, a numismatic value because it's currency. So that's why the price difference is so huge between these two coins, where the price difference isn't that um, large between these two. Um, the other thing um, you should be aware of as a collector, if you're collecting silver, is to watch out for fakes. This is one of the, the worst areas or the dark sides of, uh, of collecting silver. Because it is collectible, um, there's going to be a higher premium associated with it, and that means someone stands to gain cash. Um, by someone looking, um, looking to collect these kinds of silver, uh, silver pieces. So you have to be on the lookout for fakes and, um, and be aware of where you're purchasing your silver from um, because you may very well find yourself in a situation where something you buy is uh, when it arrives or when you, uh, where you bring it home, it's not exactly what it's supposed to be. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Another thing you want to do if, um, if you're collecting silver is you want to price hunt. Um, this is an, an extremely valuable skill. Uh, there are people who will sell you silver at any price because they believe if you're buying or if you're looking for collectible silver, that one, the price is out the window, so they'll charge you 10, 20% more than they charge anyone else. 
um, they believe that you can't discern the difference between price and value and they will treat you accordingly and they will go after your wallet so be sure to price hunt and get the best price uh, for your collectible silver and the last thing I want to leave you with is I think probably just as important I think all this is important but um, come to terms with what kind of collector you are um, even within the category of collector uh, there are you know several kinds of collectors there's a person who collects because they just buy what they like they like what they buy sure okay but there's also the person who collects expecting to flip it in you know X amount of years and now if you're doing that uh, you need to come to terms with that because now you're speculating and if you're speculating you need to do the appropriate research to make sure that what you're buying is a smart move because you'll come to find out there are, there are a million ways to lose money in silver and there's like three ways to make money in silver so you don't want to um, put yourself in a position where you're losing money on silver because you're expecting to sell it at a profit um, what this uh, 30th anniversary coin is worth today might not be worth um, as much in 30 more years we just don't know these things and you can speculate as much as you want but we just don't know but no matter which kind of collector you are come to terms with it so you can do the appropriate work to make sure that you're not being taken advantage of and um, I think that's the moral of the story for anyone that collects silver uh, please do what you need to do to not be taken advantage of and to not um, spend more than you need to on your collectible valuables all right so uh, thank you all very much for checking out this video. I'm Southside Stacker. I'll see you all in the next one.